Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Viewers, I have a special treat for you today. This is a 2004 Perugia Kalisa 1 litre GXI. Yes, it's, I've actually got one on the channel. And it was supplied by the same dealer who supplied uh, the one for the 2005 Jeremy Clarkson DVD called Heaven and Hell. It's the one that he famously uh, destroyed with a hammer outside their dealership. Now Summit Garage uh, sold that car to uh, Brian Klein, who was the director of that DVD special, and they didn't, obviously didn't know what they were going to do with it, but it was the base model, which is uh, called the EXI. This is, a, this is the GXI, so you've got a few more things on this car. Um, one of the things you'll notice is the bumpers are actually um, colour-coded, uh, whereas on the EXI they were just um, sort of black plastic, actually. Also got things like electric windows in this car. I think I can't work out what to, how to operate. It's the rear wiper. It's very strange, particularly on a day like today where it's, it's just slightly drizzling. If we have a look in the boot, it's a very, very, very small boot in this car. Which I think it's like 188 litres or something like that. So we just use, use the key. There we go. One thing I've noticed immediately with this car is this really jazzy sort of fabric. When I went to Malaysia in uh, 2006, you, and uh, you know that's the home of Perugia, that's where they actually made this car. Then um, you know a lot of cars had this sort of jazzy fabric. It was interesting. Full size spare wheel under there. I don't think you could even get alloy wheels of this car, to be honest. Um, you probably could fit some off a, um, a 90s Daihatsu Quare or Mira which is basically what this is, just uh, assembled in Malaysia by Perugia, who are a very popular brand over there. In some ways, they're sort of more popular than Proton, although we don't actually um, actually get these anymore in this country. They pulled out of the market in about 2012, which in some ways is sort of a shame. I do like the sort of very simple characteristic of this car. Let's see whilst we're here if we can find that rear wiper switch. Oh, it's just there. I was just being an idiot on the way here, never mind. Um, very simple dials, rev counter as well, three cylinder soundtrack, um, just a one litre engine with 54 horsepower. Let's see if the secret mission documents actually go in the glove box for a start, because there is a glove box here. No, sadly not. Never mind. At one point, the base model of this, the uh, the EXI, was Britain's cheapest car. They sold for under five thousand pounds at one stage. I think that was about the price that uh, when Jeremy Clarkson filmed the, uh, the review in two thousand and five. It wasn't really a review. He, he took it up to another garage, not some garage, and smashed it up. I mean, it was not really a review particularly. But um, Richard Hammond liked this car a bit better. Um, just to sort of if I pull this door here, we got twin airbags in this car. No side airbags. Little coin slots as well. It's obviously designed for kind of little Japanese cities. It, the, uh, the car was based... So I'll just look at my notes here. On the L700 Daihatsu Miro or Quarry in this country, which came out in 1998. You can see sort of here as well we've got... Ooh, that's a mirror for the driver. Do we have a passenger mirror as well? Yes, we do. We've got dual mirrors. Brilliant. No air conditioning, although if you have one of these in Malaysia, uh, you get air conditioning. I think production of these finished in around sort of 2007, something like that. 
um, introduced in 2002 to this country, just after the L200 um, Mirror Quarry had gone off sale. A little clock down there. I should put the key in and let's see if we've got a little clock there. Yep, we do. And that, that's actually the correct time too. Just turn the lock because I don't want any copyright infringement. I said the rear wiper switch is over here for some reason. Rear heated window and the fog light switch is just down there. Drying position is a little bit weird. Um, it's very upright. Now the headroom is, is remarkable. There's lots and lots and lots of headroom. Um, I just about fit in this car. Um, if I was, you know, a little bit larger, then that might have been a problem, but it's okay. We actually do get some cup holders down there as well, and a cigarette lighter, and an ashtray. You could probably, if you took this bit out, you could put a double din head unit in here as well, but you'd lose the little clock, which is very charming. Yeah, there's just not much to it. There's not even any door pockets, because it's really, it's really, really narrow. I assume this car was designed with K dimensions, um, in mind. Right, um, I suppose we'll go and take a seat in the back. Right, okay. No rear electric windows, of course, you wouldn't expect that. Someone's left me some mats as well, that's nice. Yeah, the headroom, the headroom is, is okay. Uh, I haven't got a lot of legroom, but then there's, <laughs> there's not a lot to this car at all. I mean, you'll see we haven't even got split folding rear seats. We got Obviously rear seat belts ambitiously. I think we've no, we haven't actually. Got, you haven't even got a lap belt here. It's a four seater only, which generally is for the best because I don't think you could really fit another person um, in here really. Yeah, just a very basic basic headliner, but that's all you need. A friend of mine used to actually have one of these cars when they were new. I think he he bought it for five thousand pounds in about two thousand and two two thousand and three. And um, he used to go all over the country in it. Um, I think it was the, the base one as well. It wasn't even this sort of luxury spec. Hmm. Interesting. Here's the little uh, one-litre three-cylinder engine, which proudly says it is a twin-cam unit. All produce releases in this country came with this engine. Uh, it generates 54 horsepower. There was an 850cc version of this engine as well um, for other markets. I think the, the Legacy definitely had them. It's really just a sort of uh, slightly newer version of what was called the Perodua Cancel in Malaysia, and we got it as the Nipper. Um, if you're familiar with the Ian Seabrook's Hubnut channel, then that's definitely what uh, you will know it from. The wheel trims at some point have been replaced. I don't know why particularly. Um, but yes, it's an interesting colour as well. It's not the colour that I would personally have chosen, but um, I think some people will like it. It certainly stands out. And I am looking forward to going for a drive. In fact, why don't we go and do that now? Right, viewers, time for some acceleration. More to 60 in this car it takes 14.8 seconds, and I can well believe it. You need to absolutely hold your foot to the floor to actually go in any sort of decent speed, but that's not really a surprise. The reward for this is exceptionally good handling. Unfortunately, my mount is jumping up and down everywhere because it just does that. That's, yes, that's the way it just goes on this channel. And also, the lighting is really bad, but I am very much enjoying myself. The gearing is quite long. I presume that's for economy. Uh, there was an automatic version available. This is a five-speed manual. Gearbox is quite a long throw in it, but it, it's precise enough. Steering is very good. There were three main trims available in a Perugia Calisa. There was the EX or EXI that both names were used, which was in the bottom of the range that had the black plastic bumpers, and that was the one that Jeremy Clarkson decided to destroy. And it was the one my friend owned, and it was the cheapest car in Britain uh, at uh, you know the later cars of one to five thousand pounds. 
there was the GXR, which is this one, which is the luxury version. We've got things like electric windows in this car. And then the EZI, which was the automatic version. Very similar to one of these, but with an automatic gearbox. One thing I've noticed is going up this hill in third gear, it doesn't particularly like, like it too much. I think um, you'd have to drive this car in a lower gear than you imagined in order to make the most of it. But it, you know, it's, it's quiet enough. Driving position is interesting. Um, it does get close to home like classic mini feel, as you know, people have said, and I, I am very much enjoying it. I just sort of do wonder whether uh, the majority of people would think that this was, you know, a, a car for long motorway journeys. So I don't really think it is. And also, it's um, a car where you don't seem to get particularly good um, lighting um, on the video. So let me switch the camera angle around. Again. Wow. I do apologise for my mount being in the way view, it's that's just the way it tends to go on this channel, I'm afraid. But yes, quite quite something really, um, to be driving one of these, they're so rare. And they have just fallen into popular culture, um, quite accidentally in a way. But these are really popular cars in the home market, I can't stress that enough. And Roger are a very, very well regarded manufacturer in Malaysia. I think the top uh, best selling car in Malaysia actually is a Perodua. Oh, that bit, I didn't like that bit very much. Yeah, amazing. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, well, I'm quite enjoying this, so I hope. <laughs> you have been as well. So viewers, in uh, really weird lighting conditions, which I apologise, uh, should you buy a Perodua Kalisa? Well, there's not really many of these left. Uh, they weren't very expensive to begin with, and they're certainly not around them now, especially not in this condition with just 39,000 miles on the clock. Um, they are quite interesting to drive. Driving position is really strange, but so it, it is in an original Mini. Um, I've quite enjoyed it. John Newey, who um, heads up Summit Garage, he said I'd enjoy it, and he was absolutely right. Um, I don't know if I'd particularly want to have this on a very long motorway journey, but certainly for around town things, the visibility is amazing and it is all the car that you need, as people famously say. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of No Budget Views. Thank you again to Summit Garage in Dudley, um, whose details will be in the video description if you're interested in buying this car. Um, social media links as usual are down below. Please don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, um, subscribe to channel if you haven't already done so, um, and click on notifications to be informed of new uploads. And uh, thank you again for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews.